Okay, so now that we've gone over um, what kinematics in the Y looks like and how it's affected by gravity, I'm gonna demo a problem here. I'm actually gonna demo it twice. So this is the first demo of two. And that's because last week we kind of avoided the quadratic equation and this week um, we're gonna tackle it. We're not tackling it in this particular demo, we're gonna tackle it in number two. So if you want to continue avoiding the quadratic equation, then follow the method that's in this video. Okay, so I'm doing number one. A stone is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 15.5 meters per second from the edge of a cliff 75 meters high. How much later does it reach the bottom of the cliff? So they're looking for time. And then part B, what is the speed just before hitting the ground? Now, <clears throat> remember, when we're looking for speed, we're, um, we're actually, it's the instant or nanosecond right before it hits the ground. So kids want to say, oh, it's zero, but it's not zero. It's the instant right before impact, okay? So that's what we're looking for. All right, so I'm going to list my givens. Okay, so from the problem, these are the two pieces in there. So the initial velocity is 15.5, and the height of the cliff is 75. Well, when it goes up in the air and goes back down from start to finish, you end up below your starting point. So this needs to be negative. So note that I did that. If you don't do that, it's going to get you the wrong answer. Now, if you remember what I said, with the big three equations, there are four variables in each one of those equations. So in order to solve for one, I need to know three givens. How many do I have right now? Two. So this is where, when you have motion in the Y, you have to understand that it's automatically subjected to gravity. So that is your third given. So we're talking about acceleration, and because it's oriented towards the Earth, it's going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. Note, I'm putting the direction, the magnitude, and the units. Make sure you're putting your units on your givens, okay? So then next, I need to draw my vectors. So initially, this object is going up. Note that I'm drawing it up, and gravity or acceleration is pulling down. So as that object, that stone, rises, right, as it rises, What's going to happen to its velocity? Okay, it's going to slow down because these two disagree. And I realize that it's going to reach a peak where the velocity is zero, and then it's going to drop back down 75 meters below. All right? But I'm only drawing my vectors for the start of the problem. These are changing throughout. I understand that. But this is the start of the problem. Okay. So the question is asking me to find time. So part A says, what is your time? Well, the only equation that has those three in it, now you'll notice that the kinematics equations are all written with X in it. Well, X means displacement, right? And so last chapter, it was, or last week, it was very easy because X was from left to right. Now that we're talking about the up and down, we're calling it the Y. So in those equations, All right, this was called x last week. We're now replacing it with a y to indicate that we're talking about the y direction. I'm not giving you a new set of equations because the equations have not changed. You need to say, okay, it's in the y direction. I need to make that substitution. All right, so I have of the initial, yes, I need t. I have acceleration, I need t. The problem here is when you go to solve for t, Notice that there's t to the first here, right? We don't draw the first because it's understood. And there's a t squared here. When you have two different degrees on the variable you're trying to solve for, you need the quadratic equation to solve this. So I said we're avoiding that right now. So the only way you can avoid it is find the final velocity and then come back to find time. So actually, part B says, what's the velocity right before it hits the ground? So we're actually going to solve part B first. All right? So if I want VF, and I have VI, Y, and A, I'm going to use this equation. You'll notice, what did I change that X to? A Y. Good. So after 
I've stated the fundamental equation, I have to isolate to solve for the unknown. And the unknown here is Vf. <clears throat> I have all of those, so I'm going to plug them in to get my answer. All right, very, very important to remember your negatives because a negative times a negative is going to become a positive. Good. So this is going to be all additive in here, and you get a pretty big number that you're taking the square root of. I, I didn't write it on my paper. I did do the math ahead of time this week, so um, I know I have it right. And I got 39.88, so 39.88. But we're not done with part B. If you think back, when you take the square root, how many different root options do you have? Two. Good. And so what are those two root options, positive or negative? So you now have to, this is where you could lose two points, right? You have to think about this and say, all right, what direction is it heading right before it hits the ground? negative. So I'm going to assign the negative based on the fact that when we take the square root, there's two root options. So that's actually part B. Remember, we're avoiding this equation, so I'm going to erase it. All right, so if I'm not using the y equals equation and I've already used vf squared, there's only one kinematics equation left, and so what is that? Okay vf equals vi plus at. Now you'll notice when I do these, I, my pluses are very um, straight, and I always put a tail on my t, because if I don't put a tail on my t, then sometimes you might mistake it as a plus sign. So maybe you make some of those adjustments yourself. I remember being in Spanish in uh, high school, and my teacher said, do not dot your eyes, because sometimes I can't tell if it's an accent or a dot. So actually, ever since then, I no longer dot any of my eyes. All right, so if you ever look at some of my work, you'll see that. All right, so same thing. I'm making an adjustment so that it is understandable that this is T and that is plus, and they're never going to get confused. All right, so solve for the unknown. Substitute. Remembering that my B final is 30 negative. I might have to tip it just a little. All right, and this is important because I have a negative minus a positive, right? So it's going to be a negative number. That's great because if I have a negative number on top divided by a negative number on the bottom, that makes sense because time is going to come out positive. And that's really important because time is never negative. You can't go back in time. So the answer on this comes out to be 5.65 seconds. 